done well, Raziel. Hello, and welcome back to another marvelous video. Today we'll talk about a character from the Legacy of Kane franchise. And not just any character, but the series' main protagonist, Raziel. Emerging from the shadowy and enigmatic realm of Noskoth, Raziel's tale has broken free from the gaming realm's boundaries, knitting a legacy that still enchants gamers and sparks chit-chats about adventures, right versus wrong, and the quest for a second chance. As a starring figure in a saga celebrated for its eerie vibes and tangled plotlines, Raziel perfectly captures the charm and intricacy of the not-so-typical video game hero. Today, we take a deep dive into Raziel's character, cruising through his adventures, the lasting impact of the Legacy of Kane game series. So, buckle up as we begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Raziel's early life, caught in a sorrowful role, condemned to an everlasting existence straddling realms. Raziel's story journey spans different eras, dimensions, and personal transformation while wrestling with the decisions that shape his identity. Raziel's origins trace back to the early epochs of Nosgoth's history, where he was born as a human, and as he grew up, he entered the ranks of the Seraphan, a faction dedicated to hunting vampires. Rising through the Seraphon's hierarchy, he ascended to the role of commander and later took on the mantle of head inquisitor. Despite being the youngest of his fellow commanders, Raziel's fierce ambition, exceptional skill, and merciless disposition propelled him to be the forefront of the Brotherhood. His senior comrade, Tyrell, assumed the position of second-in-command, forming a dynamic duo that led four more commanders, renowned as the Pride of the Order. Following his demise in combat, Raziel's lifeless body found its resting place in a sarcophagus within the tomb of the Seraphon among his comrades. It remained untouched and consecrated there, an enduring tribute to his memory for an entire millennium. In the era succeeding the events of Blood Omen, around five centuries after the Pillar's collapse, Cain, the vampire guardian of the Pillar of Balance, embarked on a mission to assemble a group for his conquest of Noskoth. By discovering a means to resurrect fledgling vampires, Cain raided these hallowed crypts, infusing fragments of his own soul energy into the commander's remains. This act summoned their original souls back into their bodies, with Raziel being the first to experience this rebirth, receiving the most substantial portion of Cain's gift. Having been deceased for an extended duration, Raziel's recollections of his seraphim origins had faded into the past. For a thousand years, he played the role of Cain's right hand, establishing his own vampire clan and actively contributing to expanding Cain's dominion. As the ages progressed and the vampires underwent a physical metamorphosis, their attributes became more godlike. Invariably, Cain would initiate a transformation cycle, unveiling a novel ability with his subordinates. However, Raziel embarked on a path of ultimate defiance by evolving beyond Cain's progression, which led him to sprout wings resembling a bat. Displaying these newfound appendages at the sanctuary of the clans, he unveiled his transgression before the council. In an act seemingly fueled by spiteful envy, Cain ordered Raziel's execution, tearing his wings from his back and casting him into the abyss of the Lake of the Dead. Cain's command was unquestioned by any of his siblings. Without a moment's pause, Tyrell and Duma flung him into the abyssal depths. Find no nobility in the unlife you rudely forced on my unwilling corpse. His transformation into a wraith and encounters with Cain, turning into a wraith, submerged in the lake's depths. Raziel's vampiric flesh seared with intense, white hot flames, his body writhing in torment as his skin was consumed by the excruciating blaze. Amidst the unspeakable pain, the ordeal gradually subsided as he settled at the lake's bed. This abyssal depth marked the entrance to the underworld, and as he gathered his bearings, the environment around him underwent a transformation, signifying his changed existence. In the wake of his descent, he realized that despite his obliteration, his emergence defied annihilation. 
Raziel had turned into a wraith. Wraiths can be classified as a broad category of creatures indigenous to Nosgoth's spectral realm. While some could appear in the material realm, all of them were recognizable by their distinct blue-colored essence. Coming back to the narrative, a voice from beyond reverberated an otherworldly resonance, pronouncing Raziel's worthiness. The source was the Elder God, the entity responsible for sparing him from utter dissolution. The Elder God expounded upon the Wheel of Fate and the hindrance caused by Cain's atrocities on the souls of Nosgoth, preventing them from fulfilling their fated journeys. Encouraging Raziel to exact vengeance upon Cain and his former compatriots, the Elder God bestowed upon him the mantle of the Soul Reaver, the Angel of Death. In adapting to his altered state as a denizen of the Spectral Realm, Raziel realized that his thirst for blood had been supplanted by a more profound craving. He had become a devourer of souls, driven by an unquenchable desire for retribution against the renegade vampires. Venturing through the underworld, Raziel acquired knowledge of warp gates, the art of gliding, and the enigmatic slua, unraveling their mysteries. Along his path, he unveiled the planar portal enabling his return to the material realm. Yet he encountered a drastically altered Nosgoth upon his homecoming. The Dumahim had regressed into repulsive, scurrying creatures, and the once majestic sanctuary of the clans had succumbed to ruins. Centuries had elapsed since his execution, leaving only one constant amidst the change the abyss itself. Eager to glean insights into the fate of his descendants across the eras, Raziel set out westward towards the territory of his clan. Clash of Ideals Upon revisiting his previous stronghold, Raziel encountered a scene of abandonment and desolation. Evidently, his own progeny had fallen victim to a genocidal act orchestrated by Cain, their existence obliterated from the world with ruthless efficiency. This revelation further fueled Raziel's rage, venturing into the necropolis which lay within the territory of his youngest sibling, Malchiah. Raziel discovered a disturbing practice. The Melkayim were enlisting fledglings from lifeless bodies, a repugnant sight he confronted head-on. In the heart of these macabre gardens, an appalling encounter awaited him, an ambush by a grotesquely bloated, deformed being that to Raziel's horror unveiled itself as Melkiah. As the battle between the two ensued, Melkiah warned Raziel, reminding him of the master's directive and discussing the downfall of Nosgoth. After a fierce confrontation, Raziel managed to outwit his devolved kin, employing a grinder that spelt Melkiah's doom. Even in the face of obliteration, Melkiah refused to disclose Cain's location. However, Raziel's consumption of Melkiah's soul allowed him to phase through gates. While grappling with a twinge of remorse for the fratricidal act he had just committed, Raziel received recognition from the Elder God. Now equipped with newfound abilities, he finally gained access to the Sanctuary of the Clans, where he confronted none other than Cain himself, seemingly waiting for the Pillars of Nosgoth. An intense argument ensued between the two, Raziel vehemently condemning Cain's reprehensible actions. In response, Cain declared that both the place and Raziel had outlived their purpose. Drawing his ancient blade, the Soul Reaver, Cain, attacked Raziel, who retaliated with a bit of apprehension. The skirmish eventually swayed in Cain's favor, leading to an attempt to strike Raziel down with the Reaver. Astonishingly, the blade shattered into fragments instead of consuming Raziel's soul. Peculiarly unfazed by this, Cain departed with an air of satisfaction, leaving Raziel to slip into the spectral realm. Revelation of a dark legacy. Next in his path, Raziel stumbled upon the Wraith Blade, an authentic spectral manifestation of the Soul Reaver, finally liberated after millennia of confinement. Upon contact, it fused inseparably with his right arm, evolving into a symbiotic weapon. Shortly after that, the apparition of Ariel emerged before him, still tethered to the fallen pillars. 
Her predicament only fueled Raziel's determination against Cain and his dominion. For the duration of his journey in the era of the Soul Reaver, she would serve as his guiding presence, echoing her role from 2000 years prior when she guided Cain. Raziel's next target was his sibling Zephon, and he harnessed the power of the Wraith Blade to unseal the entrance to the silenced cathedral. Over there, he clashed with the arachnid Zephanin and their human vampire adherents, ascending to the cathedral's upper chambers. Despite Zephon's taunts, Raziel emerged victorious, incinerating and vanquishing his adversary. Consuming Zephon's soul granted him the ability to ascend vertical surfaces, an invaluable skill that enabled him to progress beyond the sanctuary of the clans and into the tomb of the Seraphim, a location exposed by the upheavals within Noskoth. Yet, ignorant of the hidden history that lay within, Raziel contemplated the Seraphim as merciless and self-righteous crusaders who had perpetrated unspeakable, indiscriminate violence. Upon entering the tomb, a shocking revelation awaited him, which were profane caskets bearing his own name and those of his brothers. It became evident that he and the council members had once been these very seraphim commanders in life, resurrected as Cain's favored sons in the realm of the dead. The Elder God confirmed this revelation, igniting a storm of outrage within Raziel. His entire existence and core beliefs had been undermined. This revelation only intensified his desire to obliterate Cain. Pursuit into the Oracle's Cave Continuing his relentless journey, Raziel dispatched the Tomb Guardian, acquiring the ability to manipulate telekinetic force projectiles from an artifact in his possession. Empowered by this newfound skill, he ventured into the Drowned Abbey, Rahab's Domain. Despite the Rahabim vampire's resistance and the challenging aquatic environment, Raziel overcame these obstacles to confront his third brother, Upon revealing their shared history as seraphim priests, Rahab exhibited an almost indifferent demeanor, cryptically insinuating that Cain had salvaged them from their own destruction. Raziel eradicated him by shattering the windows in Rahab's lair and exposing him to the sunlight, consuming Rahab's soul. He gained the ability to navigate underwater. After that, Journeying north of the abyss, Raziel arrived at the ruined city of the Dumahim, once ruled by the Dumahim vampires. The city now lay abandoned and littered with corpses. Initially suspecting Cain's involvement, Raziel learned from the Elder God that vampire hunters had taken down Duma. Encountering his brother impaled within his throne room, Raziel extracted the stakes from Duma's body, leading to his revival. Although Duma expressed gratitude, Raziel remained unswayed, his memory of who cast him into the abyss still vivid. Manipulating Duma into a nearby furnace, Raziel incinerated his fourth sibling, absorbing his soul and gaining the constrict ability. Raziel, remembering the story of Mobius, the time streamer, chased Cain into the Oracle's cave under the guidance of both Ariel and the Elder. Navigating through the chronoplast, he was exposed to a series of potential future visions, which he dismissed as Cain's attempts at deception. Within the depths of the intricate machinery, Raziel finally encountered Cain and they started fighting. Unperturbed by Raziel's assaults, Cain activated the portal within the chronoplast, stepping through into the annals of Noscott's history. In swift pursuit, Raziel emerged from the time stream in an unfamiliar chamber, met by the enigmatic figure of Mobius. Revealing a sentient weapon, snatched abruptly from the time stream by Mobius, Raziel found himself immersed in the historical era that preceded the events of Blood Omen. He materialized within the Seraphim stronghold, a fortress he had once commanded as a Seraphim officer centuries before. Having heard Kane's narratives about the time streamer, Raziel was immediately skeptical of the elderly sorcerer. His suspicions intensified when Mobius's staff unexpectedly incapacitated his Wraith Blade, causing its energy to temporarily recede. Despite this, Mobius extended an offer of assistance to Raziel, 
They delved into discussions about Raziel's seraphim history, with Mobius asserting a connection that reached back to their shared human past. Mobius urged Raziel to rekindle his human essence and guided him to Cain, who awaited Raziel at the pillars. As Raziel explored the confines of the stronghold, he uncovered evidence of his past nobility. Once freed from the influence of Mobius' staff, which proved effective in disabling vampires, the Wraith Blade gradually returned to its full potency. The event, however, raised the question of why an ethereal weapon like the Wraith Blade would be affected by the staff at all. Within a chapel commemorating King William the Just, Raziel stumbled upon the Soul Reaver from an earlier epoch, positioned as a revered relic. Yet it lay shattered from the clash between William and a younger Cain two decades prior. Upon contact with the Reaver, its future incarnation, the Wraith Blade, manifested and initiated a consumption of Raziel's soul energy. This fusion restored the Blade's integrity, yet unveiled a disconcerting truth. The Wraith Blade possessed sentience, vying for control over Raziel. During this moment, Raziel noticed Mobius was disarmed and observing the process. Threatening Mobius with the dual blades, Raziel's stance was altered by Mobius's astonishing disclosure that he too served the Elder God. This revelation convinced Raziel to spear Mobius, as even he was reluctant to confront an attendant of a deity. Abandoning the physical soul reaver, Raziel departed the fortress, bearing witness to the flourishing vitality of Noskoth during this bygone era. Approaching the pillars, he encountered the grotesque sight of impaled vampire corpses, leading him to infer that despite vampirism's affliction, the so-called crusades of vampire hunters amounted to nothing but genocide. Unveiling an ancient chamber Upon reaching the pillars, Cain and Raziel engaged in a profound debate regarding the extent of Cain's guilt and responsibility. As Cain recounted his own origins and the insidious spread of corruption, Raziel had the first-hand experience of witnessing the pillars themselves succumbing to corruption. Cain unveiled that the pivotal choice he faced was in fact manipulated. His refusal and his sacrifice held no genuine resolution. Surprisingly, Cain aligned with Raziel's perspective, acknowledging the paramount significance of restoring the pillars. He alluded to the concept of vampire ownership of the pillars and hinted at an alternative solution related to Raziel. Intrigued by these revelations, Raziel permitted Cain to teleport away. In the immediate aftermath, Raziel discovered a large sealed door decorated with an insignia depicting a blue-skinned, winged beast beside the reaver symbol. Following this sealed passage, Raziel unveiled an enigmatic subterranean pillar's chamber adorned with murals that depicted an ancient war integral to the pillar's creation. The Elder God dwelled in this chamber, scornfully dismissing the ancient legends as fabrications. The game that Cain was playing, but I knew the finishing move. A battle against destiny. Advancing beyond the pillar's chamber, Raziel entered the swamp, where he sensed the watchful presence of the vampire Vorador. Amid the ancient swamp ruins, Raziel unlocked the sealed Dark Forge. Inside, he encountered murals that depicted the age-old conflict between the ancient and Hilden races. By harnessing the elemental power of darkness, Raziel imbued the Wraith Blade and activated the elemental fonts for the first time. Emerging from the forge, he was met by Vorador Vorador's presence. While acknowledging Raziel as a potential savior, Vorador's demeanor held an air of suspicion. Vorador shared his belief that Nosgoth was beyond salvation and that Raziel's answers lay with the long-deceased Janos Audrin. After Vorador's departure, Raziel realized he could utilize the time-streaming chamber within the Seraphon stronghold. To reach Janos, determined, Raziel set his sights on re-entering the fortress, unveiling the concealed light forge nestled within the cliffs of the Great Southern Lake. Raziel infused the Light Reaver. This empowered his projectiles to activate light crystals, enabling him to enter the Seraphon stronghold again. As he traversed the stronghold anew, Raziel encountered Cain waiting for him within William's Chapel. This time, Cain revealed more profound insights into the essence of history and destiny. 
He expounded that history's redemption hinged on a paradox created when two incarnations of the Soul Reaver converged in space and time, an occurrence that materialized when Cain slew William. Cain presented Raziel with the hilt of the physical Soul Reaver blade inside, summoning forth the manifestation of the Wraith Blade, a necessary element for the paradox to manifest and ultimately end Cain's life. The Wraith Blade, unexpectedly animated, surged towards Cain. In a moment of revelation, Cain confessed that this was the juncture where his destiny dictated his demise. Despite this, he implored Raziel to exert his free will and spare him. A fierce struggle unfolded between Raziel and the Wraith Blade. In a decisive instant, Raziel managed to redirect the blade's trajectory, sparing Cain's life. This choice altered history from the second to third timeline leaving the physical Soul Reaver behind again. Upon arriving at the time-streaming chamber, Raziel encountered Mobius. Mobius was greatly perturbed by Raziel's decision to spare Cain. Without his staff, Mobius was confronted by Raziel, wielding the Light Reaver. With the demand to activate the time-streaming chamber, Raziel coerced Mobius into transporting him back to Nosgoth's earliest history. You are mine for eternity. You have always been, and will always be, my soul reaver. Defiance against the Elder God Emerging from the Time Streamer chamber, Raziel found himself in a dilapidated Seraphin stronghold besieged by demons. Shortly after that, he encountered the supposedly deceased spirit of Mobius. This spectral figure revealed that he had manipulated Raziel's journey, transporting him to the post-Blood Omen era, a century after the Pillar's fall. Mobius stranded Raziel in this era to illustrate the catastrophic consequences of Cain's decision. Skeptical of Mobius's motives and even his authenticity as a spirit, Raziel's doubts regarding the spirit later proved true, as it turned out to be one of Mobius's illusions. Navigating this era, Raziel discovered a world overrun by demons, with humans adapting to their presence by becoming demon hunters. Upon reaching the pillars, Raziel encountered Ariel's bound spirit. Ariel had languished there for over a century, nursing a deep bitterness towards her successor Kate for forsaking the pillars and ensnaring her. Engaging in a debate with Ariel about the extent of Kane's culpability, Raziel found himself unexpectedly defending Kane's actions. Raziel eventually gave up torturing the trapped spirit and went on. Within the subterranean pillars chamber, Raziel confronted the Elder God admonishing him for failing to kill Cain. However, Raziel's trust in the Elder God began to erode, as he recognized the entities thriving amidst Nosgoth's descent into chaos and suffering, accusing the Elder God of being a greater parasite than the very vampires he condemned. Raziel defied the entity's authority and embarked on a path of rebellion. Journeying northward into the mountains, Raziel passed through Ushtanaim and eventually discovered the shattered refuge of Yano's Audrey. In this desolate place, he encountered Cain, who had traversed time and was awaiting his arrival. While conversing, Cain and Raziel delved into Mobius's motivations and the shadowy conspiracy that seemed to be closing in on them. After their discourse, Cain teleported away. Nearby, Raziel uncovered the sealed air forge. Here, he learned the truth that the ancients were the progenitors of Nosgoth's vampires. With this knowledge, he imbued the Wraith Blade with elemental air using the Air Reaver. This newfound power allowed Raziel to open the cracked door to an abandoned time streaming chamber within the swamp. Activating the mechanism, Raziel embarked on another journey through time. Janos Audrin. It is heartening after all these years to hear my name spoken without contempt. Meeting Janos Audrin Upon arriving in Nosgoth's early history, Raziel returned to Janos's Eyrie, discovering it untouched and pristine. However, the Seraphim were amassing their forces below in Ushtanaim. Raziel entered the Eyrie, driven by the urgency to reach the ancient vampire before the Seraphim located him. While the construction appeared to be designed for winged monsters, he cleverly used blood basins, reaver bolts, and bloodstone bridges to reach Janos's balcony above the edifice. At last, face to face with Janos, Raziel realized that the ancient vampire had been anticipating his arrival, presumably as some sort of designated vampire champion. Although Janos attempted to bestow upon Raziel the Reaver Blade, not yet the Soul Reaver, their encounter was
was rudely interrupted by the intrusion of Seraphim commanders. Raziel's earlier fiery entrance had inadvertently led them to Yanus' sanctuary. Armed with Mobius' staff, the commander seized control of the situation. Despite Yanus' efforts to save Raziel, he was teleported to the sealed Fire Forge, where he hastily imbued the Fire Reaver. This empowered him to unseal the door and swiftly return to Yanus' chambers. Rushing back just in time to witness Yanus' murder, the Wraith Raziel could only watch in dread as his former self, the human Seraphim commander Raziel, committed the heinous act. Yanus' heart was mercilessly torn out and the commander ordered Duma to retrieve the Reaver before the Seraphim withdrew to their stronghold. Following Yanus' final words, Wraith Raziel resolved to retrieve the Reaver Blade, seemingly explicitly created for him and the Heart of Darkness. Recognizing their ultimate purpose, the restoration of Janos Audric to his vampiric existence. Oddly besieged by demons from a distant future, who taunted him about his destiny, Raziel journeyed again through the subterranean pillar's chamber, where the Elder God's ominous message confronted him with a sense of finality. As he re-entered the Seraphim stronghold simultaneously with Vorador's assault on the circle, Raziel discovered the Reaver blade conveniently placed along his path. Despite harboring suspicions about the blade, his options were limited by the entrance of Malik and Mobius. With the latter's staff incapacitating the Wraith blade, Raziel was left with no choice but to wield the Reaver, and although its powers rendered him invincible, it also held him captive in its grasp, with its own agenda beyond his control. Cain had gambled everything. Cain's timely intervention. Navigating his way through the stronghold's treacherous corridors, Raziel faced a series of confrontations with his former Seraphim comrades and fellow vampires. The poetic irony of Cain's cryptic jest struck Raziel as he systematically eliminated them one by one. Malkia and Zephon fell in the courtyard. Rahab and Duma met their end in the sanctuary, while Terrell's demise came in the sanctuary choir. Finally, he confronted his own former human self within the chapter house and terminated him as well. In a macabre twist, as a human Raziel perished, the Wraith blade materialized and the dual blades turned upon Raziel, impaling him on the Reaver. In this moment, realization dawned on him. The Reaver wasn't crafted as a tool of soul consumption. Instead, the soul-devouring entity imprisoned within the blade was none other than Raziel himself, and this fate had always been his destined path. Yet, just as this grand of this revelation settled upon him, Cain made a timely appearance. With impeccable precision, Cain orchestrated a Soul Reaver paradox, effectively altering the course of history and ushering in the fourth timeline. This act temporarily spared Raziel from his predetermined destiny. However, weakened to the point of dissolution, Raziel slipped into the spectral realm. Here, he encountered the Wraith Blade, a testament to the twin binding of his own soul, an eternal reminder that his destiny had been deferred, not denied. A calculated escape Exhausted, to the point of debilitation, Raziel had traversed back to the Elder God's realm in the underworld. Despite his profound weariness, his defiance endured, unwavering against the entity's influence. The Elder God taunted Raziel, accusing him of cowardice for lingering in the underworld, rather than confronting the impending encounter with the Reaver Blade. Torn between his resolve and the weight of destiny, Raziel made a pivotal decision. He momentarily feigned submission to the Elder God, even been aiding in eradicating certain slua, yet his true intention was to seize an opportunity for escape. In a calculated move, Raziel managed to break free from the confines of the Elder's lair, transitioning into the spectral realm. However, he quickly realized that his escape was not as liberating as he had hoped as the Elder God's influence remained palpable and the planar portals connecting him to the material realm were gradually sealed off. This predicament led Raziel to embark on a unique exploration of the cemetery. There he uncovered the extraordinary ability to possess lifeless bodies, enabling his return to the material realm. Through a macabre process of rending away their flesh, he revealed his wraith form within the corpses. As he ventured forth once more, Raziel confronted the unsettling truth that his extended stay in the underworld had incurred the passage of an additional five centuries. He now found himself within the epoch of Blood Omen, a period characterized by the 
crusade spearheaded by Mobius's mercenary army and the emergence of a fledgling Cain embarking on his pivotal quest. Raziel faced a predicament in the cemetery since he lacked the elemental abilities of light and darkness, which were essential for leaving the area. The Reaver fonts he had previously relied upon were no longer accessible due to the actions of the Elder God. This forced Raziel to seek more permanent enhancements for his Wraith Blade. As he explored the cemetery further, he stumbled upon ancient ruins that allowed him to transport himself to the sealed Dark Forge within the Vampire Citadel. Here, he successfully empowered the Wraith Blade with darkness. Proceeding through Cain's mausoleum, Raziel discovered another set of ancient ruins, enabling him to transport himself to the sealed Light Forge within the Vampire Citadel. After imbuing the Wraith Blade with the power of light, Raziel could finally depart the cemetery, his destination being the Pillars. He hoped to find answers from the spirit of Ariel, who could shed light on his quest. Murals of Revelation Raziel found the means to access the warp leading to the Fire Forge near the Pillars, using the Wraith Blade to absorb the souls of the original Ancient Nature and original Guardian of Conflict Guardians. He infused the Fire Reaver with their power. Studying the murals within the Forge, Raziel pieced together the early history of the Reaver. These murals indicated that Vorador was not only the creator of the Blade, but also the first vampire, making him a pivotal figure. Encountering Ariel at the Pillars during a moment in her history, when Raziel had previously interacted with her, he sought her assistance. However, she proved unhelpful in this era. She appeared to perceive Raziel as part of the Hilden race and associated him with the conspiracy that had tainted the pillars. Despite her reluctance, Ariel provided directions to Vorador's mansion in the Termogent Forest. During his journey to the mansion, Raziel uncovered the warp to the Air Forge. He endowed the Wraith Blade with the power of air by harnessing the souls of the original Guardian of the Mind and Dimension Guardians. The murals discovered in the forge revealed the momentous truth. The presence of a Hilden champion, a foe predestined to confront the vampire champion that Raziel had thought himself to embody in a battle that would determine their fate. The revelation of the Hilden champion, Raziel arrived at Vorador's mansion and found it abandoned save for a few revenants. He was able to open a secret passageway that led to the Water Forge, where the Wraith Blade imbued the Water Reaver with the souls of the original Ancient Death and State's Guardians. The murals within the forge provided insight into the Hilden champion, revealing certain shared features with Raziel himself. Utilizing the powers of the Water and Fire Reavers, Raziel unlocked a crypt in the mansion's graveyard, where he encountered Vorador. Vorador remained wary of Raziel, similar to their previous meeting. He confirmed his involvement in crafting the Reaver Blade, but explained that Janos and the other ancients had enchanted it, though its exact purpose remained a mystery. Vorador suggested that Raziel could redeem himself by restoring Janos using the Heart of Darkness, implying that Raziel alone could fulfill this task. He revealed that the Heart's last known location was the city of Avernus, cautioning Raziel about the consuming flames and an ancient malevolent force dwelling there. Navigating his way to Avernus Cathedral, Raziel discovered a hidden warp leading to the Earth Forge within the cathedral. Raziel absorbed the souls of the original ancient time and energy guardians by imbuing the Earth Reaver. The forge's murals unveiled that the ancient vampires had once worshipped the Elder God, whose abandonment after after the Hilden curse had driven them to seek release through suicide, hoping to return to the Wheel of Fate. Raziel returned to the cathedral and discovered a dark scripture in the higher reaches using the Earth Reaver's ability to call out Earth platforms. Returning the scripture to the main altar, Raziel accessed a portal to the Avernus catacombs. Within these catacombs, he found murals depicting the Hilden's perspective of the ancient war, showcasing the Hilden's defiance of the Wheel of Fate and portraying the Hilden champion, remarkably resembling Wraith Raziel. 
the elder god confirmed that Raziel was indeed the Hilden champion, implying that Cain must be the vampire champion. Deeper into the catacombs, Raziel encountered the cult of Hashagik, led by Mortanius, and a group of Cenobites, performing dark rituals to their deity Hashagik. As the ritual concluded, Raziel approached a pit and was telekinetically attacked by Hashagik, who turned out to be his vampire brother Turel, manipulated by the Hilden to lead their followers. Raziel engaged in a confrontation with Turel, ultimately defeating him and consuming his soul. Facing Mortanius, who was possessed by the Hilden Lord, Raziel learned that Mortanius had raised Cain as a vampire, using the Heart of Darkness, creating the sign of balance. The Hilden Lord revealed that the heart was hidden within him and mentioned the impending emergence of a stronger vessel for the Hilden. Mortanius teleported away to confront the fledgling Cain. Journey into the Spirit Forge Upon Raziel's return to the cathedral, he encountered the Elder Cain, who had been actively seeking him out, specifically to thwart the resurrection of Janos Audrin. Amid their heated argument about Raziel's fate, Cain shared more about his free will, stemming from his transformation in the Abyss. Tensions flared as Raziel felt manipulated by Cain, especially given their perceived roles and Cain's possession of the empty Reaver Blade. Their conflict escalated into a fear fierce battle, driven by their deep-seated enmity. As the clash intensified, Raziel's essence began to be drawn into the Reaver. In a desperate move, he tore the Heart of Darkness from Cain's chest with his bare claws, and with a forceful blast, he propelled Cain through a portal, seemingly to his demise. Returning to Vorador's mansion, Raziel found the premises swarmed with Mobius's mercenaries. A conversation with Mobius, apparently time-traveling beyond his blood omen death, revealed that the specific identity of the champion was of little consequence as long as Cain was eliminated. Mobius departed to oversee Vorador's execution and his own fate. Raziel's path led him back to Janos's crypt, where he successfully used the Heart of Darkness and the Wraith Blade to resurrect Janos Audrin. During their reunion, Janos recognized Raziel as a vampire champion once again, but Raziel was no longer willing to act hastily. He confronted Janos with the revelation of the five centuries that had elapsed since his demise and demanded explanations as to why the vampires would create a weapon to imprison their own savior. Janos contended that Raziel had been deceived. Yet, when Raziel summoned the Wraith Blade, Janos was taken aback. This event prompted Janos to reevaluate the intricate nature of the ancient prophecies. In response, he teleported both himself and Raziel to the council chamber of the vampire citadel. Urged by Raziel, Janos elucidated significant events from the history of the ancient vampires. This persuaded Raziel to seek further answers within the Spirit Forge. Employing Janos's golden Ouroboros key, Raziel gained access to the Spirit Forge, a domain guarded by the Elder God. Similar to Mobius, the Elder God affirmed the pivotal role of Cain as a scion of balance. Your fate is trivial, Raziel. It was Cain's destiny that mattered all. Raziel's confrontation with the Elder God was fierce, but he successfully activated the Spirit Forge, summoning the souls of the previous Balance Guardians, including a restored Ariel, for the Blade's final consecration. Through this process, the Wraith Blade absorbed their essence, becoming infused with the purifying elemental power of spirit. As Ariel faded, she advised Raziel that he must mend what had been torn apart, as only then would the Sign of Balance be ready for his ultimate undertaking. Yet, with Cain supposedly dead, Raziel was more confused. He returned to Janos in the council chamber of the Vampire Citadel, seeking further guidance. Doomed Pillars and a Fateful Choice Realizing that they had reached the crucial moment of the fledgling Cain's decision to doom the Pillars, Raziel found Janos gazing at the Pillars' vista. As the Pillars collapsed explosively, the blast threw both Raziel and Janos across the room. Once Raziel regained his footing, he discovered that the Hilden Lord had taken possession of Janos. The Hilden Lord taunted Raziel, unveiling his manipulation and revealing that Janos, through resurrection, now served 
as the sturdy vessel the Hilden required for their plans. This act had already led to the death of Sign of Balance, Kane, whose heart of darkness was essential. Determined to thwart the Hilden's further intentions, Raziel engaged in a battle against the Hilden Lord within Janos. Despite his efforts, Raziel couldn't bring himself to kill Janos. Exploiting this hesitation, the Hilden Lord retaliated, disintegrating Raziel's material and spectral forms and hurling him back to the Elder God in the Spirit Forge. The Hilden Lord flew away, carrying Janus's body and signaling the dawn of a new era. Back in the underworld, the Elder God mocked Raziel, asserting that the Wraith Blade couldn't harm him. The Elder God resurrected Mobius in the Spirit Forge. However, Cain, not dead, felt the pull of the Spirit Forge and returned there to confront the revived Mobius. In parallel to Cain's actions, Raziel also materialized before Mobius. Reveling in the moment, Raziel used the Spirit Reaver to cleanse Mobius, enabling him to finally see the horrific truth he had revered. With satisfaction, Raziel consumed Mobius's soul, returning him to the cycle of fate. The Elder God dismissed these actions, but Raziel began to comprehend the reality. He was both the vampire and the Hilden champions, the one who was both redeemed and destroyed. Cain's role as a scion of balance remained distinct, while the manipulator behind history's conflicts was revealed to be the Elder God himself. Understanding his purpose, Raziel possessed Mobius's lifeless body to return to the material realm. Cain, responding instead instinctively impaled Raziel with the Reaver. Cain tried to set Raziel free when he fully appeared, but Raziel refused. He sacrificed in order to prove his allegiance to Cain. This is what I am for. The two. In this act, Raziel armed Cain with the Soul Reaver dispelling the corruption that had plagued Cain and healing his wounds. He infused Cain with the Spirit Reaver Wraith Blade, eradicating the hidden corruption and enabling Cain to perceive the true enemy, the Elder God. Using the Soul Reaver, Cain defeated the Elder God. After the battle, Cain contemplated Raziel's ultimate gift, a glimmer of hope. What makes Raziel so powerful? During his human life, Raziel earned a reputation as a formidable Seraphim warrior inquisitor, ranking just below Malik the Paladin, who held the position of Guardian of Conflict. His combat skills were highly advanced, enabling him to engage vampires and rise through the Seraphim ranks. In his ultimate battle, facing his future self, he showcased remarkable resilience, agility, and technique. Yet his efforts were ultimately futile against the regenerative abilities of the Blood Reaver wielded by his counterpart. Magical aptitude was absent in his skill set, leaving uncertainty regarding any telekinetic or magical capabilities he might have possessed. This underscored his exceptional combat prowess, not relying on magic against vampires with their diverse skill repertoire. Upon becoming a vampire, Raziel was bestowed with the most substantial portion of Cain's dark gift, establishing him as the mightiest offspring of Cain, second only to his creator. Standard attributes of his kind, like super strength, speed, and rapid wound healing were at his disposal. As Cain's first lieutenant, he entered an evolutionary phase parallel to his master, unlocking new powers and ascending to a divine or enhanced state. Although the full extent of these abilities is unknown, his most prominent one was the Gift of Wings. Following his transformation into a Wraith, Raziel harnessed the distinct powers of the Spectral Realm, achieving true immortality. His material realm form served as a projection, rendering his demise in the Underworld merely temporary. Reconstitution occurred either within the Elder God's chamber or at predetermined locations. His thirst for blood was replaced by an intensified craving for souls. Unless the Wraith Blade was used to support him on his adventures in the original Soul Reaver game. Feeding was required to increase his strength and maintain his material realm appearance. Inside the spectral realm, he regenerated autonomously, consuming souls and expediting the process. Despite his deteriorated and skeletal physique, Raziel preserved his superhuman strength enabling him to execute deadly strikes effortlessly, propel objects considerable distances with single-handed effort, and even forcefully open metal doors without any sweat. The remnants of his wings allowed him to glide through the air, 
granting access to otherwise impervious areas. The Wraith Blade he wielded possessed significant power, akin to the functionalities of the Soul Reaver Sword, enabling it to consume the souls of the entities it struck. However, its potency was somewhat inferior to that of the Soul Reaver. Throughout his odyssey, Raziel could infuse the Wraith Blade with diverse elemental augmentations. Ultimately, he harnessed the ultimate enhancement, the Spirit Reaver, to incorporate the Wraith Blade into Cain, liberating himself from centuries of anguish while simultaneously purifying Cain of the corruption that had afflicted him from birth. The Wraith Blade, when separate, could assume material or spectral forms, determined by the realm visited by Raziel. This exceptional weapon underwent further empowerment by various forges discovered on Raziel's quest, imbuing it with attributes of air, light, water, dark, earth, fire, and the most potent of all, spirit. The evolution of Raziel's character in the game. In his human form, Raziel had a refined appearance with short black hair and adorned ornate red and gold armor. His skin tone reflected a grayish but still fair hue. Upon his transformation into a vampire, he shared a hairstyle common among some council members, sporting a ponytail, and displayed the red emblem of his clan on his shoulder. His armor was silverish in color, and his wings remained visible even when not unfurled. As a wraith, Raziel's appearance underwent a radical change. His skin was light blue revealing his exposed muscles and bones. His lower jaw was entirely absent, leaving only his upper fangs exposed. To conceal this grotesque disfigurement, he utilized his clan's banner as a sort of cloak and mask. His eyes lacked pupils, emitting a white glow, and his hands lacked skin, revealing bare bones that he could employ like claws. His once majestic wings, symbols of his defiance of Cain, had diminished to mere flaps of skin. A far cry from their former grandeur. The character Raziel was brought into being by Crystal Dynamics, resulting from a collaborative effort among designers Amy Henning and Seth Karras, along with concept artist Arnold Ayala. The genesis of this character can be traced back to the proposed game Shifter, which was not initially part of the Legacy of Kane series. Amy Hennig and Seth Karras conceptualized Raziel as a central figure of Shifter, drawing inspiration from angelic themes and biblical narratives. In this original concept, Raziel was portrayed as someone who would be cast down by his own master and brethren, only to return to vanquish them. When Crystal Dynamics' leadership extended an invitation, Hennig and Karras transformed Shifter into a sequel within the Blood Omen. Legacy of Kane universe set in the world of Noskoth. The character's adversary in the initial concept was later integrated into the figure of Kane. It required numerous iterations of design before the three creators finalized his appearance. His backstory contributed to his distinct features, such as the absence of a jaw and his cadaverous look. Additionally, real-world mythological inspirations played a significant role in shaping his visual aesthetics and narrative trajectory. For instance, the Hindu deity Vishnu influenced the blue skin, while his damaged wings drew from the concept of fallen angels. Looking back further, it's worth acknowledging the influence of John Milton's Paradise Lost, which gave rise to the concept of a fallen vampire that consumes souls. Additionally, critical elements from the renowned 1920 German Expressionist film, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, directed by Robert Wien, were woven into the creative tapestry. Notably, the character Chesery, who possessed an enigmatic and somnambulant presence with a haunting and sunken demeanor in the film, played a pivotal role in shaping the visual design of Raziel. Raziel's character is marked by his strong sense of morality and honor, characterized by his inherent noblesse oblige. However, the circumstances he encounters, often beyond his control, rarely allow for straightforward ethical judgments. Consequently, he frequently finds himself making morally ambiguous decisions for what he believes are the right reasons. Caught in a web of manipulation, he becomes a pawn, sometimes willingly, sometimes not, maneuvered by various individuals for either either noble or malevolent purposes. His path to redemption ultimately culminates in a final selfless act of sacrifice. This sets him in stark contrast to Cain, as Raziel sacrifices himself not only to break free from the cycle of death and rebirth, or to combat the true enemy, but also for Cain himself, pledging his loyalty to a cause that, while more self-centered, often leads to the right outcome.
Marvelous verdict. That brings us to the end of this video. In the mythical world of Legacy of Cain series, Raziel shines as a complex character. He starts as a seraphim warrior, morphs into a formidable vampire, and ultimately a haunted wraith, all in the name of discovery, redemption, and selflessness. Raziel's adventure dives into themes like second chances, self-discovery, and the whole free will puzzle. His story isn't just a deep dive into lore. It's like a fantasy roller coaster exploring purpose in a whirlwind of chaos. A big deal in gaming history. Raziel's legacy is woven into stories that remind us how choices shape our journeys, all in the intriguing backdrop of a mysterious and ever shifting world. For almost 20 years, the series has been inactive, with the most recent installment, Legacy of Cain Defiance, launching in 2003. However, with Embracer Group's acquisition of Chris Crystal Dynamics and the legacy of Kane intellectual property, there's optimism that a new game in the franchise could finally materialize. This could potentially mark the sixth main installment in the series, whether it's a remaster, a remake, or something entirely new. Only time will reveal what's in store for us. Which Legacy of Kane character do you want us to talk about in the next video? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, remember to hit the like button and share it with everyone. I'll see you soon.